I'm going to help you to switch 25 basic English verbs to business English verbs to make you sound more confident and professional in the workplace. The first verb we're going to switch is the verb to give. Now, in its basic form, we should switch to give for provide. Here are some examples. Please provide more details about the project. Can you provide information on this product? We provide an excellent healthcare service. You provided us with several IT workers last week. Okay, the next switch is a synonym of switch and it's the action of giving to receive. And the verb we're going to use is the verb exchange. Here are some examples. We exchanged a few words over the phone. To exchange words is to have a conversation. We exchanged a few words. Or we've been exchanging emails for a few weeks. They exchanged their goods for our services. The team exchanged ideas during their meeting. Okay, the next switch is to give a lot of time or money to something. We're going to use the verb invest. Here are some examples. We have invested all of our profits into this new business venture. Or you have invested so much time into this project, I am excited to see the outcome. Okay, those are the first three business verbs around the idea of giving. So, to provide, to exchange and to invest. We have to create or make something. We're going to use the verb to produce, often used when talking about goods or ideas. So, for example, my company produces gluten-free products or he has produced an interesting piece of work or I need to produce three new ideas to discuss at the meeting. Whew. Next up we have to get. Instead we're going to use receive. Now we often use the verb receive when talking about emails, letters, applications or goods. For example, did you receive my email last Monday? We received some exciting news yesterday. <gasps> I received a parcel. Now, we could also use the verb obtain to replace get. Now, you'd use obtain when it's something that you've worked hard to get or maybe you've planned to get it. For example, if you're working to receive planning permission to build a house, or perhaps you're trying to get hold of sensitive information, you will obtain it. So let's have a look at an example here. After months of emailing and calling the council, we finally obtained planning permission. <sighs> the next verb is to allow and we're going to switch it for the word authorise. Now be aware, British English uses an S towards the end, authorise, although it's pronounced as a Z, and in American English they will use a Z, so authorise in American English. Now we authorise actions, we may authorise spending, or we may use authorise around planning. So for example, I didn't authorise this payment. Or you must get the manager to authorise your access card before you can enter. Oh. Okay, the next verb we're going to switch is the verb to buy. And we're going to switch it for the verb purchase. For example, I need to purchase 500 chairs for the new office. Next up is the verb to send. And here we're talking specifically about sending a bill and the verb we switch it for is invoice. So you send an invoice or you invoice somebody. So this can be a noun, the invoice, or it can be a verb, to invoice. 
So I will have to invoice you for my services. You will have an invoice in your inbox. The next switch is the switch from to look after, so to look after people or to look after a project, and we're going to switch it for the verb manage, to manage. So you might manage a big team of people, or I may be managing a very large project at work. Okay, next we have to stop something from happening. The verb we're going to use is prevent, prevent. So, they couldn't prevent the protesters from gathering outside their company. <sighs> okay, the next one is to go or to send back something. So, in these cases, we would use the verb to return. So, I might return to the office after I've already gone home. Suddenly an emergency has been called, so I have to return to the office. Or you might return a product that is no longer suitable or functioning properly. Perhaps it broke, so I have to return this product because it's faulty. Okay, the next one is to fix a problem. We're going to use the verb solve solve. For example, I might say, this problem won't be solved by you sitting around and complaining. We need to do some brainstorming. Okay, next up is to give someone an idea of what they should do. In this case, you would use the verb suggest. Suggest. So, for example, I might say, I suggest you take a break and tackle this problem when you get back. Or I might say, does anyone have any suggestions on how to move forward with this project? Next we have to join in or to be involved. We might use the verb participate. For example, I would like everyone to participate in this team building exercise. Next we have to sort out or to plan something. We're going to use the verb organise. Organise. This would be used when talking about people, events, paperwork or even meetings. So for example, I've organised a meeting between you and the head of the bank. Oh. Or I'd like everyone to organise themselves into size order from the tallest to the shortest. <laughs> okay, next up we have to answer. If you're going to answer an email, a question, a comment or any issues, then we would use the verb to respond. This is much more professional sounding. So I will respond to your email when I get time or I must respond to this question because it's very important. Or I'm not sure I want to respond to this comment because I think it's rather inappropriate. Okay, next we have to talk about something. If you're talking about something with someone, then you're having a discussion. So we use the verb to discuss. For example, in this morning's meeting, we all discussed the problems facing our company. It's all doom and gloom in my examples, isn't it? <laughs> okay, the next one is to talk about something in detail. Usually when talking about the whys or the hows. So why did something happen? How did something happen? We use the verb explain. For example, I'm sorry I'm late. Let me explain what happened. So let me tell you in detail about why I'm late. Okay, next we have to tell or to let somebody know something. So instead we might use the verb to inform. This is very, very formal. So I might say, I regret to inform you that our company has gone into liquidation. Or I must inform you that your website has stopped working. Next we have to tell again. So if you're retelling something, then you might be reminding 
somebody about something. For example, I just need to remind you that you are not allowed to enter the building before 8 a.m. Or can you remind me to call Mr. Smith at four o'clock, please? Okay, next up, if you say yes to an idea, to a piece of work or request, then you are probably going to use the verb to accept. So I accept your idea, I accept this piece of work, or I accept your request. For example, your suggestion to have paper towels in the toilets instead of electric hand dryers has been accepted. I accept your request to have two days off next week. Now, the opposite to that, if you are saying no to an idea, if you're saying no to a piece of work or to a request, then you may be refusing it or rejecting it. So I reject your comments or I reject this piece of work or I refuse to allow you to have a day off next week. We're far too busy and you're far too valuable to this company. Next, we have to win or to do well. You would switch this for the verb succeed. For example, our company succeeded in the race to be the first people to visit Mars. Must be a very good company. <laughs> okay, one final bonus verb for you, because I think we've done more than 25 now. The final one is if you hate your job and you're desperate to leave, you want to quit, then you would use the verb to resign. For example, I really don't like working here, I resign. Simple as that. And with that, I'm afraid the lesson is over. So if you found this helpful, please do give it a big thumbs up. The best way to remember these words is to practice. So please take one, two, or all of these words and write a sentence down in the comment section below to get in that practice. Feel free to ask me any questions. Otherwise, if you have a spare seven minutes or just a few minutes, then why not check out one of these other videos? This one's a good one. And uh, make sure you stay subscribed and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future lessons. Until next time, take care and goodbye.